Antibiotics. I'm pretty sure you've taken them at least once in your life. They always seem to be the answer when you need a fix for anything from a sore throat to something worse. But do we really need antibiotics when we feel sick? What are the dangers of taking too much? And how are they linked to what's called superbugs? Antibiotics were first discovered after World War I in 1928 by Professor Alexander Fleming. They're typically extracted from fungus. They usually work by killing bacteria in the body, good and bad. Now it's important to remember that antibiotics only target bacteria and do not kill viruses. So antibiotics will not work when you have the flu or the common cold because these are viral infections. As effective as antibiotics are in treating some diseases, they aren't suitable for everyone. They can cause side effects like allergic reactions in some people. So antibiotics are associated with about 10 to 20 percent of side effects. Uh, fairly common, I would say. Uh, in the general public, it will be associated with uh, rash, diarrhea, some nausea. Um, some patients may be allergic to some classes and they should be quite careful about this. Yeah. And there are some out there that would immediately think of asking the doctor for antibiotics when they're sick. But should you do that? That's not a good practice because antibiotics do come with side effects, both short term as well as long term. And as with all infectious diseases, when there are long term side effects, especially when there's resistance that's coming onto our body, we can spread that into our family members, sometimes elderly or children that can have profound effects in the community setting. What actually happens inside our bodies when we take antibiotics? Did you know each of us carry around at least one and a half kg of bacteria? They live in our hair, skin, gut, and lungs. They play a crucial role in maintaining many of our body's healthy characteristics. So when we take antibiotics, they target the true pathogens, or the bacteria that causes us harm and makes us sick. But at the same time, they also harm the healthy bacteria living inside us. This healthy bacteria gets damaged and mutates and slowly becomes resistant to these antibiotics. They then hide in our bodies or spread to other people in the community and we eventually develop infection from these resistant bacteria. So, if antibiotics can cause resistant bacteria to grow inside us, how much should we be taking? Do we need to finish the whole course like we're usually told? Or can we stop when we feel better? It really depends on the context, the type of bacteria that is causing the infection. So for example, like tuberculosis, where resistance can involve if we don't complete the cause of antibiotics. Um, for most of the bacterial infections in our body, like I said, we carry a lot of healthy bacteria and it's not possible to kill every bacteria on our body. So for these common type of bacterial infections like lung infections or urinary tract infections, we can actually potentially stop these antibiotics as soon as we feel better. So not necessarily we need to complete a course, uh, my advice would be to um, talk to the doctor who has uh, prescribed these antibiotics. So now let's think about it. If bacterial resistance can evolve, then the bad bacteria just get stronger and stronger, right? I'll give you an example. Take an elderly person in hospital with diabetes. They tend to have a lot of bacterial infections, and the only way to fight these is, you guessed it, more antibiotics. Over time, the bacteria in the patient builds up so much resistance to many common antibiotics, it creates a superbug, which then needs more powerful antibiotics to treat. When superbugs spread from one person to another, this leads to antibiotic resistance in the community that slowly grows over time. It's a global problem. Superbugs are associated with close to 5 million deaths every year. By one estimate, there could be up to 169 million deaths associated with drug-resistant pathogens in the next 25 years. That's more than 24 times the number of deaths from COVID-19 in the past four years. Beyond those eye-watering figures, how bad is the superbug problem now? It is a very serious problem. So in a recent study uh, where they took 
the global data um, and summarize them. This superbug problem has become the third killer in the world in terms of the number of deaths. Um, this is extremely prevalent, especially in Asia, and Singapore being at the center of e uh, travels and economic hub, we are at high risk of this resistance being imported into Singapore, and that's what we are seeing, even in the community setting. So actually five or six years ago, we did a study in residents in Clementi, and these are residents who's living day to day, not having any contact with the hospital and not really taking any antibiotics regularly. But we found that one in three and one in four of them carried resistant bacteria in the gut without any symptoms, silently. Another question is, are we running out of antibiotics that can work against these superbugs? Unfortunate answer is yes. So most of the common antibiotics that's discovered since 2000s uh, are increasingly useless against these type of bacteria. Um, but fortunately, there's been a lot of research and a lot of um, policies from both governments, NGOs, uh, WHO, to incentivize new antibiotic development. And there's actually quite a number that's in the pipeline. But way more research is needed to fund these antibiotics from discovery to bedside. It takes roughly 10 years and about 1 billion US dollars to discover a new antibiotic. In Singapore, there's a huge amount of effort being put into surveillance to detect the level of resistance in different bacteria in both hospital and community settings. There are diagnostic labs in hospitals to detect these infections early. Infection prevention and control measures also help to prevent the spread of these bacteria. We did a quick poll earlier to get a sense of how you feel about antibiotics. Most of you say that when you're feeling sick, you'd avoid antibiotics if possible. I think it's very heartening to see the results of this poll. Um, I think that's really changed from a few years ago where we communicated with the GPs and did surveys. And one of the key factors that drive them to prescribe antibiotics was actually demand from the patients. Mm. And if we as a community can reduce that demand and have a more rational conversation with the GPs, that can help to reduce antibiotics. Um, I, I would also like to emphasize that even though today's talk has been emphasizing on reducing using unnecessary use of antibiotics. Um, sometimes there are circumstances where we need antibiotics. There are still really important medications that can um, prevent complications down the line if we treat them early. So I would say um, in terms of uh, better use of antibiotics, always have an open conversation with the GPs and discussing uh, things like, can we delay antibiotics for a while? How long do I need antibiotics for? And if you require diagnostics to differentiate viral versus bacterial infections. Yeah.